Well, <laughs> this now is a, a little category that can be used as a site once one had the machinery for constructing topo on sites. Uh, a, a, a topos, which clearly is like the variable sets over a post set of regions, but it's not a post set anymore because all the all these uh, etal objects over a fixed object form a very nice little category, and it's not a post set. However, nowhere is it locally a post set. It's not an aton do. We don't get an aton do this way. Instead, we get, something, we get something almost opposite. Because the, if, if you consider, it suffices as a site to consider connected, uh, well, just, even just rings, you know, just, uh, rings, which, with no hidden, there's connected spaces, connected schemes over the given scheme, which are moreover a tau, moreover have this infinitesimal isomorphism property. So this category of connected etal objects has a very interesting property. If you have two morphisms which agree even on a very tiny piece of the domain, then they're equal. In other words, a tiny piece is a, is a map which is always every morphism, no matter how tiny it is. So, but that's a, a typical map. So every map in this little category, the category thinks every map is an every morphism, but it's the other way around. I don't know how much, how much thinking a category can do, but I say, I, I say thinking and so forth because when you look inside the topos, these maps are not epimorphisms. Epimorphism is a property of universally testing cancellation and so forth. If you just test against other vital connected objects only, then you have this cancellation problem. It's a sort of uniqueness of lifting. You have liftings that agree at all, sort of like an initial condition, agree at all, then they're uniquely determined. So that means that you have a site in which every map is epic. So here we come to an inter one, an another interesting connection with uh, logic. Peter Johnstone had shown independently of, of all that, well, I suppose, I don't know what we're into his thinking, but that there are, um, certain uh, uh, toposes, which include the sheaves on a post set and the actions of a group, include those two cases also, the different, general, different common generalization. But the property that they have is that the, um, yes, uh, I'm gonna get my name, okay. Um, what Johnstone calls QD, which I've called various things. Um, today I'm calling it adequately separable. So the, 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 um, the idea is that An object A in that category, actually an extensive category is the appropriate. <coughs> By logicians, it's called the side of it. So that's where the D comes from. That means that if you put it by the diagonal map inside its square, that there, that there exists a complement. Should exist another another inclusion, so that you know, a squared is equal to a plus a time along these actual maps. So it's a, in other words, it's a in a, in a topos every subobject has a so-called complement, but it's a hiding complement, meaning that the union, although it's disjoint, the union of the two things may not be the whole thing. Right? So you could roughly you could say boolean complement. Opposed that the hiding complement becomes a Boolean complement, or just since we don't need the hiding operation in general to discuss this, just that there should exist another subobject which is both disjoint and the two add up to everything. 
Now, again, in a topo, it's just easy to see that if every object were separable, then in fact every object would be Boolean. It would be a Boolean topo. Two values would be one plus one. But in many topos which are not Boolean, there are still some objects which have this property, which, which we, we call, for, as algebraists, we call it separable, because it corresponds to, in, in uh, number theory, uh, theory of polynomials and so forth, to uh, separability. The idea if you have the solutions of a pol uh, the space of solutions of a polynomial equation, if, if, all the, if all the roots are very distinct from each other, then it's called separable. See, so it, it means really that the that the in the in the, in the space of the, the pairs of in the space of pairs of solutions that any two are really very distinct. By contrast, in most objects, the diagonal sort of has at least an infinitesimal glue with the rest. And so and that's met, that's detected in algebra by the fact that if you have repeated roots of a polynomial, like say x squared times x minus one. Cubic equation, it only has two bare points as roots, but one of those roots is actually sort of double, so there's a bit of an infinitesimality there. And it's no longer, it's no longer, it no longer has a clean diagram. You can even develop the whole terminology about being clean. Yeah, so anyway, the, so the, 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 the quotient part, or the adequacy part, means that every object has an epimorphic image, is an epimorphic image of some uh, decidable or separable object. Since this condition is obviously closed under arbitrary disjoint sums, it's equivalent to say that the topos has a set of generators which are uh, separable or decidable. Generating and then inadequacy is, uh, it, it expresses the idea that you generate it up to fullness of home sets. So, so if you, if you, you, you can use this terminology for clean, a, clean, a space with a clean diagonal, if you collapse it, the diagonal gets dirty. Many analogies can be built around this idea of cleaning and <laughs> smudging and so to, a, to, to try to uh, picture how these, uh, these special kind of toposes work. So, but what, what Johnstone showed was a topos is QD adequately separable adequate number of separable objects to cover everything if and only if there exists a site of epimorphisms that is a site which a subcategory which generates everything and which thinks that it consists of epimorphisms it has this cancellation property so so for example the connected Etau objects over a given space has this, this property. So in other words, this second idea of generalized space, of, uh, which includes the key example of Grodin even though his generalization didn't, <laughs> they're both topos. His, the etal, the etal topos is included as in the, the petit etal topos is included among these things with epic sites, whereas the, the etal topos things with monic sites. So now we have these two generalizations of classical spaces, or even of groups and and open sets, both of the common generalization of both. Do they have a still further generalization? Well, obviously, there's an obvious one, sort of body cancellation property. 
namely if you have two parallel maps you can conclude that they're equal provided followed by something they're equal and if that alone were sufficient you would say you would say what that f is uh, monic if f were monic this would certainly be true already but also if if there existed an x so that ax equals bx if that's if, it, if that were sufficient you would say that x is epic well, maybe you're in a category with the property that not everything is epic, not everything is monic. Nonetheless, if you have both of these hypotheses, for emphasis, I can put an existential quantifier at no logical cost, since those variables don't occur on the right. That's if it's, so this is a bi-cancellation property. So, so, um, Topos is which have a site like that are a reasonable candidate for the idea of a generalized space. I should have said, of course, that it's also the, the opposite court sort of idea is common, namely that any topos is a generalized space. And this point of view, of course, has many, many virtues, but um, I'm saying that there's a more, more, um, immediately connected with classical ideas of space are, are these, these things. Well, now this, okay, like, like uh, let me just say that like, um, like the monic, that it, I mean, by that I mean categories, all of which have, all whose maps are monic, or those which are epic, or the bi-cancellation ones, and so forth, these are all categories of categories which are reflective. So given any category, you can, in a universal way, force them to have this property. I mean, this, this obviously induces a congruence relation on the Hom sets of the category. So even if it's not true, you can force it to be true, and that's the left adjoint of the inclusion of, of the bi-cancellations into that. Yeah. The, the, the reflection preserves products because it's a general feature, because the, if I take one of these things, say A, and look at, look at the functor category, A to the C, where C is arbitrary, this is still in the same subcategory. If A consists entirely of monics, then A to the C also, or any C, no matter what the shape of C is, or if I have the bi cancellation, et cetera, et cetera. Or, obviously, also posets. This is, I should have started with that. It's well known, right? If you take a category, you just you just apply an existential quantifier. You replace the whole offset by zero or one, according as whether there were any or not. That's the associated poset. So that's the reflection of the posets. And that be a product of not only is the inverse limit of a poset to poset, but even a poset to any category power is still. Post and that means that the reflection process preserves products. Preserving products is very important because it means that you can push down algebraic structure that depends on having its domain, the structural operations having their domain be products and, and so forth. And again, again, the same thing is true of groupoids. Groupoids, sort of the fundamental groupoid of a category, you just force every, every map to be invertible of course might involve killing the category, but anyway, there's a universal way to do it. <clears throat>